Janome. Hey everybody, Mitzi Red here again and welcome to another Summertime Skill Builder. I am so excited to have you join me here in my studio, even though what y'all don't see is a total mess. We've been doing some moving around to get in here, so we're going to just focus this way, right? <laughs> so, but welcome in. Give everybody a minute to come on in so they can join us. Um, we've got a fun lesson today. We're going to talk about top stitching. So it's going to be one, I'll tell you a little fun stories about me doing it. And uh, so you can kind of hear, you know, my mistakes. And then I'll give you some pointers on your best tips in order to get really nice, clean top stitching. Um, if you don't do a lot, like for example, garment sewing, you may go, why would I need top stitching if I'm a quilter? Well, think about it. What do you do when you put those bindings on, right? It can be a top stitch. So we'll talk about that as well um, and kind of go over your options there as we kind of cover things. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up on my iPad here. So what I'm going to do is my best to try to read your comments as we go. It's not always a perfect science. We know that. Oh, wait, you don't want to hear me talk. Hold on. Turn my volume off. There we go. All right. So I will do my best to get your comments as we're going. As you all know, anytime you've joined me in before on any of the live events, I usually, within 30 minutes to an hour, I'm back on and I'm reading over your comments, answering your questions. So if I don't get to you right away or Chris is on the camera, he doesn't see your comments right away, don't hesitate. Don't worry. I will get to you tonight or as soon as I see them. Okay. So, as always, let me know where you guys are coming in from, because I always love to see that. So, let's see where we're at. All right. We're just now, everybody's coming on, because we came on about a minute early. So, as y'all are coming on, I'll tell you a little secret about today's lesson, okay? Timing couldn't have been more perfect, because we've been having, like, crazy schedules, everything going on, and we had a little rough situation overnight with one of our awesome little goats. So we're a little tired today. Owen had baseball clinic today. So I'm doing this all in a good energy drink as we talk as well. But I wasn't actually the one supposed to be with you all today. Yeah, y'all were going to be getting a special one. And the amazing Kimberly Einmo was supposed to be teaching you top stitching. And if y'all have watched Kimberly on social media, you know her life has been so busy. And Kimberly, please keep on posting the Rue videos. We love seeing the Rue's come to eat your house. But so she asked and reached out and asked if I could take the event over for her today, take a little weight off her shoulders. And I mean, who turns down Kimberly? I'm right. When I say she's America's sweetheart, I truly mean this. So she asked me for my address here at home. And when you know it today, Today, I go get the mail and I've got the coolest stuff in there. Besides the fact that she sent me this sweet little card, which I will cherish forever. Um, she sent me a little cute little hedgehog that's a, it's pinned. So it's a magnetic. So a little pin stick to his belly. How cute is that? So that's staying over with my machines. But then every girl's favorite love, right? fabric from Australia, Aboriginal fabric. So I've got some really cool fabrics to get to go through. Um, I think I'm going to do a wall hanging. I'm already thinking of designs ideas. So I'm super excited for that. So Kimberly, if you get to watch, which you should be sleeping right now, but over there, but if you get to watch, thank you. I'll reach out to you after we're all done because this was quite the surprise coming through. All right, let's talk top stitching. So most people think of it, like I said, in regards to garment sewing is where we a lot of times see it. You think about on your clothing, your the size of your pants, like your jeans, the the denim. We really a lot of times always see them on our denim jeans, right, with the gold stitching. So most people always associate with that. But top stitching can also be used in a decorative sense, too. Now, I'm going to say to, today more towards the functional when I'm showing you top stitching. But we can talk about the decorative as well, because you've got tons of stitches in your machine that will work beautifully for making any of your top stitching that needs to be done. So let's start out. I've actually made myself a list and I can post my list in the comments when we're done. What are the must haves to set you up for complete success when it comes to your top stitching? So my number one thing is a good machine. It really makes a difference. Now. All of you guys are sewing on Janome's with me, right? If not, you should be. 
So we've already got number one covered, right? We've got the good machine. We, we don't have a good machine. We got the best machines that are out there. Number one. So you're already number one, set yourself up for success on that. And those of you who do not have a Janome that are watching, we still love you, but it's time to move over to Janome's. It really is. All right. Second thing, you need to fit your needle to your project. So what does that really mean? So if I'm working with denim, let's say I'm doing a pair of jeans, I'm going to want to use more, more than likely a denim needle. I mean, granted, denims can come in different weights. So a lightweight, you might get by with a different needle, but normally you're always going to want to go to a denim needle. You need to have a needle that's going to fit what that fabric is. So like, for example, um, we'll start with this. Like this is just the regular Janome red tip needle, size 14, right? So for a lot of our wovens and things like that, you could get by perfectly fine with that one. Now, there's also, we're going to look at the Janome top stitch needle. Okay, that's an 11 and 14 on size. Then I also like, well, you know, we always tell you go with Janome or Oregon on those. So I've got some of those. I am madly in love with these titanium needles. I love working with those as well. And I've had really good success using those. And of course, like these packages come in different size. So it makes it a little bit easier when you're looking at what needle you might possibly need. Now, the other thing you want to look at would be, um, let's talk denim needles. So I have packages of denim needles all over this house. Do you think I could find one today? No, not one package. I think the sewing fairy came in, no, I'm talking top stitching and took all my denim needles. I mean, I cannot find them anywhere. So the fourth one I normally would have down would be that dental needle. Because again, let's see kind of where you need to be depending upon your project, depending on your fabric. So that's our needle situation. The third thing on my list is the right foot. All right. Now look into your sewing box, look into the feet that came with your machine and see what will work for you. I dug into my uh, box that came here with my M7, and I wanted to say, okay, well, what, what feet would work for me? Well, this is the blind hem foot, okay? Most of us know it and use it for blind hems, but it has this nice little guide. Oops, there we go. Nice little guide on it as well. So it can line up. I was actually going the other direction with it. It can line up really nicely on my edge right there to be able to use that. Love it. It actually worked beautifully to do that. Then you guys all know that Janome released the bi level foot just a couple months ago. I showed you guys a video on it and working with it. This is perfect. This is ideal for doing that top stitching because look how nicely that'll lay directly on it. And you see the marks so you know where you can put your needle position depending on where you want to go. If you don't have any of those, there are still plenty of options out there. Um, you could come in and use some of your regular standard feet are perfectly fine. I'm looking in this box. This is just my, my M7 box. I have my other accessory feet in another box. But you have those options. Find a foot that's going to give you that nice little butt up against that edge of that fabric to help keep you really nice and clean and straight. Oh, one thing I didn't mention about needles. When we talked about these, the stand, you know, standard needles, right? Don't forget, twin needles are also an option. You just want to make sure they're the right size. I don't have them with me today, but that is an option for you. Of course, remember, twin needles are straight stitch only. You're not doing decorative uh, stitches with that. So stick with that straight stitch. But a twin needle option is a great option as well. Okay. Um, number four. We're on four now. Thread. Okay. If you use a standard thread, let's say like a 50 weight, it's really going to kind of bury itself in that fabric. You're not going to see it. And the idea behind the top stitch, besides it being functional, is that you want to visually see that. Again, if you're wearing jeans today, I'm in shorts, literally just came from the ballpark. If you're in jeans today, though, look at the side. You see that stitching. You see that gold um, threads coming down. So what do you use? There's plenty of like, they're labeled as a top stitch thread. Look at your, your heavier weight threads. So like, for example, this pink that I've got here is a 40 weight. Um, this one's a Wonderfill, their designer, love this thread. And it's a 40 weight on that. 
What's interesting though is this is also a 40 weight, but it's a cotton. So where this is the polyester, this is the cotton. So you're not gonna see, I don't think you see the cotton as well as what you would on the polyester. But then on my machine that I'm actually gonna be stitching with today, I've actually got a 12 weight on there. So you're really, that's what, when you were looking at those feet that, that stitched in there right now is the 12 weight. So you're really gonna see that come through. Now here's the other important part, especially talking about this 12 weight, right? 40 weight, I wouldn't be so concerned, but like a 12 weight, a 28 weight thread, they are perfect and beautiful for that top stitching, but only use them on top, okay? Don't use them on your bobbin because it may not stitch and look as clean. So what you wanna do and what I'm doing with these actually is my, I've got just a 40 weight cotton in the bottom of this because I've been piecing for days now. And literally it's the bobbin I was piecing with. And I'm like, I'm not gonna change it. It's not gonna show because of the heavier thread and it doesn't. So go with your standard bobbin. Uh, thread. So like a 40 weight or maybe like a 50 weight, that's fine. Um, but keep the heavy thread on top to go through. Okay. Our machines just work better a lot of times when we have that bobbin weight down there. That's threads. Okay. Where are we at? We're at five. Here we go. Number five. Tensions. All right. Here's the hot topic of tensions. Now I'm on my M7. And this is the Quilter Collector Series. If y'all haven't seen it yet, it's got this beautiful blue front. That's why it lets you see more blue than the gray. Um, we'll come around to it in a little bit. But this machine, like a lot of our lines that have the techniques folder, as I call it, or the little t-shirt icon, um, except for our M17s, they actually say sewing techniques. So these have actually a top stitch setting in them. So I can easily set it up and the machine automatically sets me where I need to be. So I did a little comparison. On the standard straight stitch on our machine, that number one stitch, okay, the tension on that, make sure I got it right, was a 3.4 is what the tension is automatically set on these machines. When I go into top stitch, it sets me at 3.8. So even if you don't have automatic tensions or maybe those sewing techniques, you might want to play with your tensions just a very slight bit to make sure you have a really nice clean on top and on the bottom as well, because you want a nice clean stitching going through. You don't want to see what little eyelashing or you don't want to see little, what looks like little knots coming through or too much bobbin on top. So you may have to play with your tensions just a little bit because we are working with such a heavier weight thread. So, you know, give yourself some leeway. Um, back in the day when I was first starting out before I had these awesome electronic machines, um, I would change my tensions for something and then I forget what my tension is supposed to be at. And then I'm all out of whack when I go back to my project. So if you've got a manual tension, you might just keep a note where what normally you're set at and what works best for you. So you know, and remember to go back to that when you come back to your project. Okay. Ask me how I know. All right. Number six. Oh, I already said this. Number six was the regular thread in your bobbin. Did that. I already talked about when I was talking threads. We're good. Number of uh, what are we on? One, two, three, four, five. That was six, seven, seven. Increase your stitch length. Now, normally, like when you first turn our machines on the number one stitch on these that are automatically set, you're looking about a 2.2 to 2.4 on average, right? Well, it looks fine. It looks great, but it's a tight stitch for a top stitch. So you want to open that up and give yourself a bigger stitch. So I like about a three and a half. Um, especially like when I'm putting on uh, binding, I usually go with three and a half. Um, the machine itself, when I was in it, I think it had me at a 3.0. Let me just take a peek. Yep, a 3.0. So it's still gonna give you a, a little bit larger of a stitch, but you want that visual to be there. So go with that one. All right, final tip and trick to go with this is practice, practice, practice. All right, play with those tensions, see what you like. Um, Always, always, always before you take on any project, like let's say you made this gorgeous, gorgeous dress and you're right, you want some decorative top stitching on it, you have excess fabric. Try it first because you want to make sure that needle's right and that thread's right and everything looks really good. Um, you know, every time I go and buy fabric for a project, I always buy extra, even though I usually tell Chris I only got what I needed. But let's be honest, all of us girls get extra fabric. So take that extra fabric, or maybe it was when you were laying out a garment pattern that, you know, the excess we're cutting off as we're cutting out our pattern pieces, save that on hand for this technique, just to make sure you got plenty to work with. All right. So let me take a quick peek. I've been talking. So you guys, if you're asking questions and I'm missing you, just hang tight. Like I said, I will definitely catch you. 
Oh, hey, Tracy from Janome's on. Hey, girl. Thanks for joining me. So, Valerie, hi. Ra okay, Rhonda, it's 5 a.m. in Australia. Yes, that thought is around that, which means Kimberly should totally be sleeping right now, right? Of course, she's probably feeding, feeding kangaroos. I'm totally jealous. But, all right, let's do some top stitching. Let's get the machine set up and see where it's going. Um, Chris, I'm going to have you come around here. If you can avoid the disastrous mess, good boy, <laughs> to get a few at the table. <laughs> Like, seriously, I redid my office, so everything is everywhere, so y'all just ignore the mess. I'm going to go that bi-level foot. I really love working with that. Do you need me to get that light for you? Is that working? We're trying to get lights adjusted so you guys can see plenty. So, technically, I need to lock my machine. I'm just going to slide my foot on because it doesn't sit, you know, on the bottom because it's not flat. So, if you put it down below, it kind of won't sit straight for us. All right. So what I've done for the sample and for us to look at, and I've kind of done, had to reach around there. I've done faux seams. What does that mean? I literally just pressed them to give me what would be like a seam. All right. And so I'm going to show you here. I'm going to go to the home. You want to come over on my machine for a little bit? All right. So isn't that blue gorgeous in this quilter collector series? I saw it and I died having to have it. So, <laughs> you know, I love my M7s. So this is just our utility. Now these are grayed out because I'm currently using my straight stitch plate on there. So don't worry about those because our main focus with what we're gonna talk about today is staying in here with these straight stitches. So where I was talking about looking at the different tensions, I mean like that, I can look at my tensions with that number. So I'm right here. So on a standard straight stitch, 3.4 is where the machine is automatically gonna set to. All right, and that's just like the standard straight stitch. It's a 2.4 on my stitch length. So if I was going to use this option, I'm going to increase my stitch length. Okay. Now the other one you see here that I really like, and I'll show you all that too, is this, what looks like the triple stitch. You see that one? Okay. I know you're at an angle a little bit. There you go. So a lot of people think this means it's going to do three stitches right beside each other. And that's not what it is. It's going to do that one stitch three times, and then it's going to move over to the next stitch three times and, and continue on. So it gives a beautiful heavy stitch on that. But for today, I'll show you all this. I'm going to go into my t-shirt or techniques. Again, what's grayed out is just because I have my straight stitch plate on, so no worries there. And right here on this first page for me is top stitching. So I'm going to bring up my top stitching. So needle position is automatically going to go in the center. I'm at a 3.0 currently, and here I'll show you on the tensions where it bumped it over to a 3.8. So, you know, depending on your machine, if you've got this, I found it worked beautifully without having to change anything. Um, through the techniques, but if you feel like you do, then do what is best for you. Okay, so I'm just going to close that. All right, because I'm already in top stitching, I'm at a three. Like I said, I like mine just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go three. Three point four is going to be good. So because I'm using my bi level foot, slide back in here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower this down, and then I can make my fine tuning adjustments as far as where I want this to hit. So. Here's the thing to think about too. The, doing just the regular top stitch, I don't have a whole lot of space here where it's gonna come on and that's fine. It's gonna keep it really nice and close to the edge. With using the techniques group in here, I can't move my needle over. It actually keeps you only on center. But if I go to the original utility page, that number one, I could of course adjust my needle position over and I'll show you that too. So let's just go ahead first. And what I'm looking here, because I have the bi-level foot on, this is the lowest side here that drops down lower. So I'm just going to keep it right there on the edge. We're going to sew. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The needle's in almost in that middle position, but it still keeps it really close. I'm just going to keep going. I'm setting so sideways right now, but that's okay. I want you guys to try to get a good view. Oh, my goodness. Phone's ringing. That always happens when we go live, doesn't it? The phone rings, the delivery comes by. There is always something that's going on. So keep in mind, you would have your, you know, fabric. This would be a normal seam where it's raising up a little bit on me. is just because of the fact that I'm literally just, as I called it, it's a faux seam to come in and put it through. Okay, I'm just cutting my threads just so you can guys can get a nice look on how that is with the nice straight, big stitches. I love the way those come through. And let's take a look on the back. Now I'm using, like I said, it's just a regular cotton. You can see how it keeps a nice clean stitch on the back. The back looks just as pretty as the front does. So I'm very happy with that one. Now that, like I said, is in our techniques, but we're talking about some other options. Let's go in here 
And let's look at that triple stitch, as I like to call it. I'm gonna pull my thread. This thread's a heavy weight, it's, only, it's a 12 weight. So when I use my automatic cutter, I wanna make sure that I've got it, um, that little excess tail kind of pulled out of the way. Because what it's gonna do is it's gonna to try to pull it underneath there. Didn't do it so much on that side. Nope, looks good. But by pulling it out of the way, you don't end up with as much, with the, the nesting ring like that. So here goes that triple stitch. Whoops. Me. It's kind of off the edge a little bit. Let's see if I need to reset that. That thread can be really difficult sometimes. So we'll just take our time. But you see how it's taking the fabric up and back and up and back? It's doing a triple level of stitches to come down that side. I'm just keeping my edge right there up against the side on that, on that bi-level foot. It is absolutely perfect, perfect foot to use this with. Now I'm gonna show y'all something too, because the original started out at a 2.5, because that's just what the standard length is. I'm gonna up to my favorite, the 3.5 for top stitching. So that way you can see the difference on how it's gonna lay out. Still do the same, still that triple stitch, but you can see the difference on how it looks in the end with the tighter stitch versus coming with a longer stretched out stitch. So let me just come here to the end. Okay, we'll just cut my threads there. Now, what about the fact you're like, oh, I'm getting to the end, I don't know what I wanna do. You can always, if you're not using triple stitch, you can always do that. But let's look here. This was the stitches that were 2.5. You see how tight those are? So what can happen too, when you're doing these seams is that you see how this fabric's starting to pull together? So it can pull it in pretty tight. But then if we come over here to the 3.5, which are these guys right here, then you can see that it's nice larger stitches that come through. And even with that triple stitch, it's gonna give you a nice heavy, heavy stitch lane in there, but it still lays it out really nice and clean. So that's why I like going the larger stitch itself. Um, also, just playing with some of the other ones here in the techniques, I could put my needle in that left position. I'm gonna reach behind your deer and grab another one. So if I did put it in the left needle position, it's just gonna give me even a wider um, area. Let me grab that thread out of the way. You're good, I'm just grabbing tweezers around you. So because of the thickness of this thread, when the machine cuts it, it kind of tries to pull itself back in there and out of the way. But I wanna keep a nice thread tail also. If you're finding, like with these heavier, heavier threads, that it's kind of starting to bunch up underneath, like when you first take off stitching, what you can do is just take a thread tail at the back, start on a different piece of fabric, and then just feed over onto your fabric. Some of us quilters like to do that. It just, you can help prevent. But so I'm looking here on that side. I'm just gonna make sure, yep, I got great clearance in there. And now this is just gonna be a straight stitch. I'm gonna up me to 3.5 again. And let's just let it go do its thing. Again, I love this bi-level foot for coming in and doing uh, any type of top stitching. If you don't have one yet, you can get one at your Janome dealers. And if you are especially doing garment sewing, anything like that, you're gonna love having this one. Now, the fabric I'm working on, you see it moving around and shifting a bit. That is just a woven cotton. It's actually found in the quilters section. So that's why it's like, looks a little different. Gives a nice little idea and a fill of the denim without going at heavier weight. Because like I told you at the beginning, I can't find my denim needles. So this one here, you can see it looks pretty good, but when you compare it to how clean this top stitch was, when I use the actual techniques where it adjusted my tensions, you can hopefully, let me fold this excess over so you can get a little closer. You can see a little bit, see where these are more, they're, they're kind of more blended together versus this giving a more defined top stitch. Hopefully, I'm looking over on your, yeah, you can kind of see that. So this is because the tension was the 3.8 versus that 3.0. So that's why I'm saying always start on a test piece, try it out, see what looks best and works for you. And then you go from there. And like, for example, testing these out on the same fabric, I like this guy better. So that's the situation I would set the machine up in to get a more cleaner uh, and clearer area. So definitely give that a shot. So that'll get that going. I'm gonna take a quick peek here over at, see if there's any questions, just bear with me for a second. Guys, I always love having you guys join me in here. This is always wonderful. And thank y'all for hanging with me. So 
We're going to tell, like I said, we're going to wrap this up here shortly. But what I want you to do is look at, like I said, from here, what you could do. Now, if I had my zigzag plate on, my standard plate, then all these excess would open up. So let me just show you all that. Let me reach over you, dear. Sorry. All right. My favorite. I swear, I love this machine, but this has to be my absolute favorite thing ever. How easy it is to switch out these plates. Like, no more looking for forever long, you know, screwdrivers that are constantly missing. I can go from there. All right, I'll move over so you can swing in here, Chris. So if we look at it, because I now have my zigzag plate on, of course, it opens up all of my options on my stitching. And think about that, too, as far as, you know, what we like to ask kind of more what you do. Most people do on garments where they're doing a straight stitch. But that doesn't mean that's where you have to be at. You could always come in here and come into like some of our, like the applique stitches. You could come in and like where these have the three, it's the same idea, it's three stitches, and then it goes two, that one right there, it goes one stitch over, two or one stitch down, two over. Using these even when it comes to, like for example, even in your quilting, your decorative, uh, maybe you wanna do decorative stitching in that quilting for finishing it, you can always pull in these. And the same thing, think about your needle size. You know, do I need to go a bigger needle because now I'm going through multiple layers of my quilt sandwich. And on top of that, you want to have a large eyed needle because especially if you're using like that 12 weight thread, you want to make sure it threads easily and comfortably in there and feeds through well. But any of the stitches you're coming into, let me scroll through a couple of ours. You look at these stitches and think about, well, what could I use those for? Okay, maybe not buttonholes, right? But um, like I was in here on the applique stitches, coming in and doing those on top. Um, some of these zigzags, now these would get really tight, so it might not look as well on that. But some of these that are opening up where you have more to it, like for example, that one's going to be a nice heavy stitch coming in and using that heavier thread and use that to stop top to stitch, even on like a garment, a shirt, something like that, coming down that seam, take your time with it, but could look really neat and really, really fun on the decorative side of things. Let's go the other way. Um, these, like I said, what you're looking at here is my M7, the QCS version, the Quilter Collector series, but these, these are all in the M7. You've got them in your 15,000, um, the new M17, which I wish I was stitching on today to show you guys, but I love my M7. No complaints there. I promise. Um, but yeah, just looking at some of the stitches on what you could do coming in with these to do, uh, like I said, down, down a sleeve or something like that. It may be a small stitch, but it just gives that decorative touch to it. So think about that as far as what your options are on what you could go with. Like I said, even in the quilting stitches, you know, to come in and do. So there's plenty of options that are available for you in your machine other than just a straight stitch. So you guys know, we'll go, you want to go that way? We'll go back around. <laughs> I'm serious, guys. I would love to be able to show you. I love getting people having you guys see my studio, and it is a complete disaster. I mean, like both sides. Like before we went live, I was moving stuff out of the way, going, "Is it going to be in the video?" Because it's such a mess. But it's getting there. I have to be done by Sunday because it's just that. That's my deadline. Sunday's got to be it. But anyway, so you know the summertime series. We've been doing the skill builders, right? So you have one week from today, they'll post the link in there for you um, to submit your projects because that awesome prize package is going out. Guys, I'm jealous. I would love to be qualified to get to get hold of that one. That is a great package. You can see it on the Summertime Skill Builder site. But you got one week, just one from today to go ahead and get your submission in to qualify for on this week's. Um, if you've qualified on other weeks, those, those count, they, they add up to get your submissions in. If you haven't done it before, here's your chance. Get in there because the prize package is just phenomenal. So that's going to get us through then talking about top stitching, basic top stitching. If you have any questions, as you know, put them in the comments. I'll be going back through them here shortly. Take a look at it. Answer your questions as we go. Um, I want to see those projects. You guys know I love seeing what all y'all are doing. I'm trying to be in the classroom more and more to take to see your race projects and pictures, but life's crazy. Um, but it's it's slowing down for a couple of weeks, uh, but only a couple. <laughs> so it's always nonstop with us. But do take your time, practice that top stitching. If you're working on garments, think about how you can put it into that garment you've got under your needle right now. We would love to see that. If you've already done it, post those pictures too. We want to see what you've got. 
And uh, the main thing is practice to have fun with it. Don't stress yourself out over overdoing any of it. It's not worth the stress, seriously. So other than that, I'm going to let you all go for today because we're heading off to go on a take one kid for his uh, riding lessons on his new horse. So we're going to run out for a few minutes, but um, again, put your questions, comments in there. If you guys ever need anything, you know how to reach out to us. And other than that, I hope you guys have a great week top stitching and I look forward to seeing your projects. Take care. We'll see you soon.